Hi there, this is Ranga from In 28 Minutes and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about continuous delivery. This is a continuation on our previous video where we talked about continuous integration. We defined continuous integration as checking the correctness of the software as often as possible. So that was what we thought continuous integration was to check the correctness, whether the tests are running, whether it's compiling, whether uh, our whether we are able to deploy it properly, all that kind of stuff, we want to do it very often so that we get immediate feedback. That was the uh, focus of continuous integration. So what's this new term called continuous delivery? That's what we would learn during this particular video. This is my definition of continuous delivery. That basically is that you should be always ready to deliver your software to production. So think about it. What the definition says is I should always be ready to deliver software to production. There is another term which is quite famous. Actually, it's continuous deployment. Actually, in continuous deployment, we, as soon as we have a new feature, you actually deploy your software to production. So it's continuous deployment. So that's basically actually always deliver software to production. And continuous delivery is one step lesser. So we are always ready. Whenever business says, oh, okay, I'm happy with this go, then you can deliver the software to production. So continuous delivery is more one step lesser than the continuous deployment in the sense that you're ready, but whether you deploy it uh, every day, that's uh, not really important as far as continuous delivery is concerned. So with continuous delivery, it's the fact that you are ready to deliver is much, much more important. So what would be the typical problems that you would face when you would want to be deliver, you'd want to be ready to deliver software to production almost at every moment. What would be the typical problems? The typical problems would be A, testing, right? You want to make sure that your software is really working. So you should really have good automation tests. So that's one. The second thing is deployment. So if you don't have automated deployments because the code for it to be ready to go to production, it should have been tested in at least two or three environments before that. And if you have manual process for them, then it would take a long time. So they should be automated deployment processes. So the entire deployment pipeline should ideally have been automated. So you should be able to easily move code from development to testing to uh, probably user acceptance testing and to production at a click of a button. And it's great if you have visualization around that. So if you can see uh, visually where different versions of software are and which environment has which software, that's even better. So that's like, that are few of the problem areas usually when we talk about continuous delivery. So what we, one of the important things, I mean, here it says, if it hurts, do it more often. So the typical things which hurt in moving a software to production is making sure that your deployments are right. Making sure that you have the environments configured properly. So all these kind of tests, the most important thing, all these kind of things, the most important thing is to make sure that these are all automated. So if I really want to create a new environment, I should be able to do it at a click of a button. If I want to deploy software, I should be able to do it at a click of a button. So those are the important focus areas. So the things which cause you the most pain, you should really do them as often as possible and mostly in automated routes. So as we talked earlier, automation tests, without automated tests, you cannot really test whether your software is really working. I mean, this could be unit test, this could be integration test, this could be user acceptance test. So it's good to have a lot of automated tests, or actually it's mandatory to have a lot of automated tests when you talk about continuous delivery. And the next one is the automated deployments through deployment pipeline. So that's something which we already talked earlier. So those are really the focus areas as far as continuous delivery is concerned. And the tools are no different from what we use for continuous integration. So these are all continuous integration tools. You have a build tool to build everything, probably to be able to run your test, to run your integration test, to be able to deploy your software, all that kind of things you need the tools. And these build tools would be integrated with code quality things like Sonar, probably a deployment plugin to be able to deploy your thing and a lot of automation test plugin to be able to run your tests and things. And these build tools are run through the continuous integration build server. So basically the continuous integration build servers will help you to say, run this build as soon as there is a commit or run this build every hour. So that's basically the functionality which this continuous integration build servers provide. 
and the famous ones are Jenkins and Team City, Bamboo also a little bit. So those are the tools as far as the continuous delivery is concerned. Also the other tools which might be really useful in uh, current scenario are the ones which help you to create environments automatically. So you'd want to be able to set up and create environments at a click of a button. So automating them is also very useful when you are doing continuous delivery. So what are the important best practices which are related to continuous delivery? As usual, the most important thing is having great tests and also making sure that you're committing code as often as possible. Without this, you are not really making use of the continuous integration or the continuous delivery setup that you have. And the most important thing that the continuous delivery enables, the most important advantage of continuous integration or continuous delivery is the fact that you get immediate user feedback. So if you are able to deploy software very frequently to production, then you'd be able to get user feedback on what features are important to the user. What does the user feel of about a particular feature? How is the user making use of a specific feature? So you get all these inputs and you'd be able to uh, develop much, much, much better software. And the other thing you can do to get immediate user feedback is do not deploy for all the users. So probably have a subset of users to whom you give a initial deployment. And once you don't have problems there, or once you get good feedback, then you can deploy it to uh, the entire user base. So that's one of the things which are which is possible, which is good through continuous delivery. And the other advantage is happier teams because we keep delivering value consistently. So I do something today and I will see it in production tomorrow or day after. So as soon as I do something, I see the value directly in production. I mean, that's true of developers, testers, I mean, deployers, your environment people, everybody is happier. And that would result in very, very happier teams. So you have happier teams delivering software and happier users, and that's really the purpose of developing software, isn't it? Okay, so there you go. That's uh, the thing about continuous delivery. So continuous delivery is a very, very great thing to be able to do. I mean, uh, there are a lot of problems in getting successful at continuous delivery, but once you're successful with it, then you would eliminate a lot of redundancy, a lot of waste in your software development process. Good luck and all the best. Until next time, this is Bai from Ranga in 28 minutes.